Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're taking a look at another action figure vehicle, and the one we're looking at today is Obi-Wan Kenobi's Jedi Starfighter from Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. And this is the second one of the Starfighters that he actually flies in the film. The first version we see uh, is in the um, opening battle scene where he and Anakin Skywalker are trying to rescue the Supreme Chancellor uh, from the clutches of General Grievous and Count Dooku. And uh, that ship uh, is sort of like red in color, and it basically gets uh, beat up and eventually destroyed in that battle sequence. Uh, so this version is the version that he flies uh, later on in the film to Utapau when he's um, trying to track down uh, General Grievous, who's hiding out in that system. So the ship only makes uh, kind of like a brief appearance in the film, but I actually kind of like the color scheme on this one a little bit better than his other version. And... Uh, yeah, so I'm very happy to have this in my collection. I was able to pick this up on the secondary market. I believe I purchased this from uh, Toy Wiz, and uh, I believe it was maybe around fifty or sixty dollars. Um, uh, acquiring vehicles uh, from the prequel era is a somewhat uh, expensive kind of thing, and um, you know. Uh, but in terms of uh, how you need to collect vehicles for three and three quarter inch Star Wars. Uh, action figures now it pretty much is uh one of the few options that you have um is buying older vehicles because uh, hasbro doesn't really seem to want to produce uh very many vehicles uh for say their vintage collection line there's only a handful of them that they've actually done and um, you know so they produce a ton of figures uh but no vehicles and so in order to get vehicles you kind of have to go back and do your research and figure out when these vehicles were produced and kind of fill out your collection that way. Um, some of these vehicles are pretty high quality too. So uh, in terms of uh, being up to par uh, with uh, what is included with the vintage collection, they're pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't say they're fantastic in terms of the level of detail that you might get in a vehicle uh, produced specifically for the vintage collection, but they're actually quite good. I wanna go over some of the features of this, uh, including the cockpit and also uh, the deployable wings and the firing missiles and so forth, and uh, just show you uh, what's included with this vehicle. So in terms of uh, some of the features on this, it has retractable landing gear. You can see these things just kind of stow away like that. And then also uh, there's these deployable wings, uh, and how you activate them is this button back here. And I gotta say this, this activation button is a little finicky because uh, when you press it, uh, they often don't fully deploy and you kind of have to give them some help. So the mechanism in it is uh, somewhat flawed, and I'll show you that. Basically, when you hit the button, you can see the bottom ones flop out, and if you hit it again, um, you can kind of get these two to deploy. But again, this one doesn't really seem to want to deploy fully, so you can kind of like get it started, and then when you hit it again, uh, then they fully deploy. So uh, what should happen with a single uh, press of the button doesn't really happen. So uh, for whatever reason, um, the way this toy was designed, it doesn't really let those wings deploy the way that they should. But once they're deployed, I think it looks really cool. Um, and uh, you do see this, um, this deployment actually happen in the movie as well. So, uh, so that's very cool. One other feature of this, uh, there's uh, some missile launchers here. So you can actually hit this button here and you'll see a missile launch out the front. So you can see like that. And then there's one on the side as well. So, and those missiles launch, and it's a very cool feature. Uh, also, uh, one of the things that was uh, interesting about this vehicle, it does appear that it was designed to fit an actual astromech droid. However, uh, you know, because this thing just sort of plugs in there, sort of just the top of a droid. So you can see there's this cavity in here uh, designed for a droid, but I've tried uh, multiple versions of astromech droids from my collection and none of them really seem to fit in there completely. Uh, the closest one I have is uh, this one from P the Power of the Force line, this R2-D2, which uh, kind of fits in there. If you kind of fiddle with it, you can kind of get him to sort of go down in there, but not really all the way. And the only way he can kind of get in there all the way is if you flip his legs upward like this, then you can get his body all the way down in there the way that it's supposed to. But again, that looks ridiculous. And I'm not sure if there is a version of an astromech droid uh, that they produced uh, for episode three that actually fits in here. 
So I'd have to do some research and figure out if that's the case. Um, whatever the version of the droid is, I'm guessing you would have to remove uh, the legs from it or at least the feet from it in order for it to fit in there the way that this appears. So, so yeah, I'm not too sure about that. But, you know, uh, it, they do provide you with uh, this version, which also has a turning head. So, uh, and that looks acceptable, even though it's not not a real astromech droid. Um, and again, it just confuses me about why they produced uh, this cavity in the first place if it really wasn't going to fully accommodate uh, a droid figure. So again, kind of confusing there, but it is what it is. So in terms of the cockpit on this, in order to access this, you uh, basically just need to uh, open it up from the front end. And you can see inside of there, there's quite a bit of detail there in terms of the sculpting and everything. And uh, there's some stickers and stuff that indicate some of the instrumentation. So uh, quite interesting and dynamic looking. And what you'll notice is there's a lot of room in there too, which means a lot of three and three quarter inch action figures are probably going to fit in this cockpit pretty easily. And I don't have uh, the specific um, version of Obi-Wan Kenobi from episode three uh, that would be appropriate for this, uh, but I do have... Uh, my episode two uh, pilot Obi-Wan Kenobi figure, and this one will fit in here uh, just fine. Um, so as you can see, uh, you can pop him into the cockpit. He fits in there perfectly, and uh, the cockpit will close as well. So, And you can see what he looks like in there. I'd love to be able to get a version of, you know, um, the episode three Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, in pilot gear. Uh, but I don't know how common that particular action figure is. I think they produced one. Uh, but whether or not he uh, fits into the cockpit of this ship uh, as easily as this version, I'm not really too sure. But again, uh, because uh, this cockpit is uh, sort of roomy, I'm guessing it will accommodate uh, most of the three and three quarter inch action figures, as long as they have uh, the bendable legs and so forth like that. But I think it looks really cool in there. Um, again, I'd like to be able to get a more accurate version to go in the cockpit of this. Uh, but, if you know, um, you know, this is... It is what it is. And it should be noted uh, that uh, this uh, particular sculpt for this ship, uh, you can see the date on the bottom of this is 2004. So uh, this is the one that was produced, obviously, for uh, Revenge of the Sith originally. And uh, I believe they use uh, pretty much the same sculpt uh, for all of the versions of Jedi Starfighter from the movie. So uh, I'm guessing Anakin Skywalker's Obi-Wan's first version and, and this version all use uh, essentially the same uh, sculpt for the ship itself. So I think it looks fantastic. Uh, definitely one of my favorites in terms of uh, vehicles from the prequels that they produced. I think they did a, just a fantastic job in terms of all the detail and so forth. And I'm uh, very happy to have this in my collection. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more reviews of action figure vehicles in the future, Think about subscribing to my channel because I will be covering a lot more of this stuff in future videos. Until next time, I hope you're having a great day and may the force be with you. Thanks for watching.